Hi there everyone, welcome back to Objectivity. Here we are once again in the bowels of the Royal Society with another object in a box. And this is going to be one of the prettiest things you've ever seen on this channel. Keith is promising bling. Okay. Here we go. We're going to open this up and have a yeah. look. What is it? Are you ready for some bling? Whoa. This is a 19th century snuff box. And it belonged to Charles Black of Vignoles, who was a, an engineer, quite an important one. Wow, that looks like some wrapper should have it attached to a chain or something, shouldn't they? Look at that. What is a snuff box? Well, well, snuff is is just ground tobacco, and sometimes there's flavourings in there, different kinds of things. But yeah, you just instead of smoking tobacco, you just stuff it up your nose, have a good sniff, and it's a way of getting nicotine into your brain quick. We've got gold, we've got diamonds, we've got it all here. Bit of silver chasing there, some blue enamelling, very nice. Look at this, and this is all the correspondence from the years 1942 to 1943 relating to this snuff box. Keith, the floor is yours. Take it away. Mm. Well, Charles Black of Vignoles was a civil engineer and primarily he worked on railways, but he wasn't always that way. He, he began life uh, as a soldier after the European wars were over in the early 19th century. He needs a profession, so the one he chooses is civil engineer. He begins to uh, get in on the ground floor of that great movement of, of railways. These are the new thing. Uh, we're very familiar with people like uh, George Stevenson and Zimbard Kingdom Brunel. Vignoles worked with these people. So this is this is a real golden age of engineering. It and, is. And he's, he's mixing it up with the big boys there. there. There was big money to be made. The first proper passenger railway in Great Britain was the Liverpool to Manchester line. And Vignoles was involved in that, in surveying the line. And then there was some very, very famous locomotive trials, the Rainhill trials to decide which locomotives would run on the railway. And Stevenson's rocket was the winning locomotive. Vignoles, unfortunately, was in with John Erickson on a, a locomotive called the Novelty. They didn't win, but at least it, it got Vignoles into that, that general uh, area. I, th I think we're going to find not winning becomes a little bit of a theme here it's for our friend Vignoles. <laughs> he did work in Britain, but a lot of what he did was on the continent, in Europe. So he goes to places like Spain, France, uh, the Ukraine, some of the German states, and he begins to build their railway lines for them. Uh, and he found his way to Württemberg, which is near Bavaria. Württemberg. Okay. That's right. Basically, he's going over there to try and win some railway business. Indeed. So he goes over there to advise as a consulting engineer, how would they best uh, build their railway lines, make the state more prosperous, bring it up to a, a modern standard. And um, he, he advises the king, the king of Württemberg. Okay. Now, I found something in a letter here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I should probably de-glove here. You should, yeah. Quite often when you're handling papers, gloves just make you a little bit more clumsy and people like Keith would prefer me to have the gloves off because it decreases the chance of me clumsily ripping one of these pieces. So this is a this is a little profile that's been written of Vignoles, I think maybe by a relative as part yes. of the handing over. In 1843, almost 100 years ago, having made a great reputation in railway work, he, Vignoles, was invited by King William of Württemberg to advise on plans which had been prepared by his ministers and local engineers for the railways of that state. The king seems to have been very well disposed to his English advisor. So the king liked him. But there was considerable opposition in the ministerial and court circles of Stuttgart. And according to CBV's private diary, that's Vignoles' private diary, the king, in quotation marks here, had not the courage to fight for the engineer he had brought out here to tell him the truth. So it sounds like the English guys come out, told him like it is, this is what you've got to do. The king says, I like this guy, let's do it. Mm. But there's a bit of politics going on and the rest of the Germans are like, we're not having it. In the end, Vignoles failed to secure the adoption of his proposals for modification of the plans. But in addition to his fee of two and a half thousand guineas... Pretty decent. So he got, he got a lot of money. He was presented on the 22nd of March, 1844, with a warm letter of thanks from the King, accompanied as a mark of His Majesty's appreciation for his services, by a gift of the snuff box. So the king said, here's your fee, but you're not, I'm not, you're not getting the big yep. job, but here's a little present. Consolation prize. So the king liked him. Yeah. Now we know the story, it all makes, it's all much more interesting. 
Now let's take the whole snuff box out so you can have a better look at it. Now, Keith, some people, have, I'm sure, have noticed among all the bling, there is a picture there on the front, and some people might think, oh, is that Vignoles? No, that, that would be the king, so King William I of Württemberg. So the king has basically said, here, have this gift, it's a picture of me. It's a memento, yeah. <laughs> What's in the box? Are you yeah. going to open the box? Well, I think we should, don't you? Let's open the box. Look at that. Is this snuff from Württemberg? Is this Vignoles original snuff? No, it, it, it's, it's 20th century snuff. We don't know exactly when it was put in there. Uh, but this is a sort of object that would be passed around a table at dinner time, after dinner. So you could have your little pinch of snuff. Or we can even see his name, Vignoles. So it's been personally inscribed. But everyone's going to want to know, what is this box worth? This uh, is valued at £30,000. £30,000. I feel like we're on one of those antique shows It now. does feel a bit like that, yeah. yeah. Could be another career. Yeah, I think. You think yeah. we could do that? We could. Yeah, I can imagine that. When Francis Hawksby did this, you had a turn handle, uh, and what you would want to do is put your hand against the glass here so that when it was turning the friction on, on your hand would make the thing light up so it would glow with a nice purple light. 